Johnny, let's play a game called Who Said That? We're sharing some quotes from spring training. We're going to talk about who actually said what we share and what it means for the Halos this season. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen every day. Every show is free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thanks for being here with us for this episode of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, be sure that you're following the show at Locked on Angels on Twitter, and of course at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with us and all the Angels updates that are out there. Speaking of updates, we do have an update regarding Sarah Valenzuela of the LA Times, the beat writer who covers the Angels. She had to reschedule our interview, so we will have that episode for you tomorrow instead of today. But we are very excited to talk with Sarah Valenzuela, get her insight into spring training and things that she's, she has observed. So we're looking forward to that conversation. But Mike, today we're going through some of the quotes that have come out of spring training, whether it's from Jeff Fletcher or Sam Blum or Sarah or Rhett Bollinger. All of these guys have been covering our halos so very well. And there's a lot of quotes that have come out of spring training. And so we're playing a little game of who said that? Who said that? Who and, uh, said that? <laughs> we're looking forward to diving into some of these. And uh, we're going to give you our answers to who said that. And of course, ask some important questions regarding these quotes. So Mike, why don't you read off the first one for us? All right, Johnny, who said that? The biggest thing is he's got to do what's right for him Mm. and what he feels is right. If he feels that staying in Anaheim is the right move, he should do that. And if he thinks otherwise, I'm going to do whatever I can to try to convince him to stay. Johnny, who said that? That's a quote from the GOAT. That's from Mike Trout talking about (laughs) Shohei Otani regarding his decision to leave in free agency or sign an extension with the Angels. And so, yeah, uh, for me, I was thrilled to hear that, Mike, to know that Mike Trout has said he's going to do everything he can to help uh, Otani stay in Anaheim, convince him. Now, how does one superstar like Mike Trout convince another superstar like Shohei Otani to stay, what would you say? I think I would invite Otani to help me build this thing and to win a World Series. We've mentioned this often on this pod. If they win a World Series with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani this year, or if he re-signs next year and he's with this team, they're going to build a statue of Shohei Otani outside of yes. this stadium, especially if they do win that World Series. And so if I'm Mike Trout, I'm talking about legacy. I'm talking about leaving an impact in Anaheim. And I think that if Shohei is going to leave an impact and have a great legacy, it's going to be one where he stays in Anaheim and helps this team win. Don't be Kevin Durant. Don't chase after the championships, like make your impact with the team that gave you the opportunity. This is what I would say to Shohei if I was Mike Trout. Well said, Mike Frisch Trout. Well done. (laughs) Hey, how about the second quote? This is my last year and I'm aware of that. As of now, I'm an angel and that's all I want to focus on. Mike, who said that? Shohei Otani when he he was asked about his contract and asked about if he was going to sign an extension and if he was asked about what's going to happen at the end of the year. And Shohei has just stuck to the script, Johnny. He has said the same thing since the beginning. I'm going to focus on what's right in front of me. I'm not going to focus on the end of the year. And I think it really brings up an important question for this team. Will this contract situation be a distraction all season long? Or do you think these simple, clear answers actually help Shohei and the team to stay focused? 
it will only be a distraction to you and I and Angel fans <laughs> yes. and Locked On Angels listeners yeah. and viewers because the media will continue to shove it down our throat and yeah. we're going to be sick and tired. I'm already sick and tired of it. Right. There's always something out every day about Shohei. Oh, what what does this mean? What is? How do we interpret this? And da 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 da. And so for me, I, I love the fact that Shohei Otani is keeping it simple, right? Yeah. He's keeping it focused on this season. I, I we were having a meeting of locked on angels or locked on hosts for baseball, and I said, you know, the angels are going by that old adage of procrastination helps you focus. They're waiting <laughs> until the last second to get get it done because they only have one year left of Shohei Otani. And that was me all through college. I would stay up late writing essays and papers the night before because it helped me focus. I had to get it done. And, <laughs> right? But did you graduate, John? <laughs> yes, you graduated, I did. I right? graduated with a great grade. <laughs> so uh, yeah, all of that to say, I'm thrilled that he's keeping it short, keeping it simple. And I honestly think that it's going to be better for everybody's mindset to not have that distraction and go out there and win. And just from all of the footage and all of the things that we've seen, I love what's happening in Tempe, Mike. I love the interactions between Shohei and his teammates. Obviously, he loves being with them. And so all I can say is that if they can focus on this season and make it a winning one, I think it increases our chances of him staying in Anaheim. Like you said, you want to don't want to ch chase those championships. You want to win here because then your legacy is cemented forever. You were the guy who got the Angels their first World Series since their very first one, and you helped Mike Trout, the GOAT, get to the World Series. That's what I would want on my resume, which I stayed up late writing the night before. <laughs> that procrastination must be in our DNA because I did the same thing when I was in college. <laughs> All right, Mike, you want, let me read this third quote. Yeah, actually. let's do so the third one here. I've always been open to it. There's several layers to this one and Shohei's earned the right to play through the year, explore free agency, and we'll see where it shakes out. Who said that? That was Otani's agent, John, yes. when he was asked if Otani was open to extension negotiations in spring training. And as you've just mentioned, everybody went nuts with this. And so mm -hmm. I appreciated Sam Blum's clarity on Twitter. He said, this wasn't a, we're not going to talk about a contract and mm -hmm. we're going to go to free agency. He, it was just him saying, hey, we're open to it, but there are layers to this. And Shohei has earned the right to get to free agency. I think that all of that, John, is an agent ploy. I think all of that is what an agent should say. An agent is never going to say, yeah, we're in the midst of a conversation right now and we've mm -hmm. already shared numbers and details. He's not going to give us any of that information because right. Shohei's not going to give us any of that information. And we know the angels won't because the angels don't talk to anybody. And so all of this quotes and all of this information that's out there it's going to be a bit ambiguous. It's going to be a bit simple. And I think really, honestly, this is what we need to expect all season long. Just the fact that that Nez Valella was in Tempe, that says a lot to me. We saw a I picture so. of him yeah. and Perry Manassian together. And look, I know Jeff Fletcher said that he often makes that trip, but you know, to, this year's especially important, and it's great that he's there. I mean, unless you're going for baseball, you're not going to Tempe, right? And so <laughs> the, you're going to have those conversations once you're there, and I think that him being there is a good sign, even if it's just part of his normal visit. Hey, yeah. coming up on Lockdown Angels, we're going to talk about what Rob Manfred said regarding the Angels' ownership situation, uh, what he said was kind of ridiculous, and I think that we will definitely share our opinions on that one, <laughs> and we'll get to that in just a minute. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. We're at the midway point of the NBA season, and now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just download FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel the of official sports betting partner of the nba thanks for making locked on angels your first listen today and for your second listen you got to go and check out locked on mlb prospects with host Lindsay crosby he's a prospect encyclopedia he knows the ins and outs and ups and downs of all the minor league systems his podcast is free and available wherever you get your podcasts 
All right, John, who said that? Who We're said getting that? there. We're getting there. Part of me wants to say yes, but you know, there's still a process to this. So I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it to the higher ups. But right now we're feeling really good and everybody's really happy with where we're at. Johnny, who said that? Michael, that's the one and only Chris Rodriguez. Yep. C-Rod, when he was asked if he is 100%. So it sounds like he is still working his way back. I had a conversation on the YouTube comments and I mixed up the fact that Chris actually had that capsule shoulder surgery at the end of 2021, and the back stuff was what's been plaguing him through his career. So, you know, at once, in one sense, he was over the back stuff, but now he's got the shoulder yeah. surgery. And our viewer on YouTube said, I had the same thing. And so it's going to be interesting to watch Chris Rodriguez come back from that. And there's a lot of concern around, you know, is he going to be able to crack the uh, the roster in 2023, or is he going to need a little more time? Mike, what's his role this season? First of all, can I go back to that quote real quick? Because is he the rock? Because he said we, and uh, like, like he was he was talking about himself in like kind of third person there. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, so <laughs> I his think he's role, talk, is he talking about the medical staff? I think and everybody he is. I'm just, yeah, giving, I'm just yeah. giving him a hard time. Uh, I think his role right now is going to be to get healthy. And I don't think that he's actually hmm. going to be on the major league roster to start the season i think it makes more to get some work in the minor leagues because the bullpen as we've talked about on this pod it looks really strong and i'm not sure where he slots in unless he has a phenomenal spring training and just blows people away i think c rod's gonna start either in double a perhaps triple a just so that he can get his reps in he can get his innings in and then if the angels need him they can bring him up for depth like june and july what do you think that's a good good spot. Yeah, don't no need to rush, especially after our conversation about the bullpen yesterday. I feel really good about where we're at. Even the number six starter spot. You got Griffin Canning, Chase Silseth, Jaime Berea, and possibly even Tucker Davidson. We're going to see him actually start on Saturday against the Mariners. He's going to go two innings. And so you there's plenty of options. I don't think that there is a need to rush anybody. I'll be interested to see if we get to see some C Rod in spring training. All right, Mike, who said this? I had mostly a normal off season. I've done a bunch of bullpens. I took up Pilates and we'll do a little less lifting in order to keep my back healthy for the season. That was Griffin Canning, John. Yes, and sir. I'm excited that he's back because I think he's going to be a huge asset to this team. And I think that he'll be a huge asset as a sixth starter potentially for them. I know we've talked about Jaime Berea and him possibly holding that role down, but I do think that Griffin Canning, if a hundred percent healthy has a real shot because it's not going to be a, a, a position that they're going to count on too often. As you've mm -hmm. mentioned, there's 16 potential mm -hmm. starts for that sixth starter. That's Good job. really hard to say. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I think if you're going to give anybody a shot at it, besides Jaime Berea, why not Griffin Canning, who is a starter and he's not going to have to go out there 30, 25 to 30 times a year. And he's not going to have to put all of these innings on his arm. You can actually kind of break him in. And so I think it's good to maybe carry him on this roster and you may, may be able to bring him in during a blowout, either if you're losing or if they're losing to get him some innings and then have him be that sixth starter on the day that you need him. What do you think? I think he's a great option as the number six starter. In fact, I think that people are going to be very, very surprised when he goes out there and does what he does on the mound, he's got great stuff. And we know that in 21, he was very hit and miss. Yeah. And there were days where he looked electric and days where he, he did not. And I think Mike, I have, I've mentioned this on the show before. I want to say he had more starts that went six innings with three runs or less than those bad, like blow up games yeah. that he would have where he couldn't go very far in. So if he can iron out, those sorts of things. I think he would make for a great number six starter. And remember, he's got quality pitches. And so I'm looking forward to seeing him on the mound again. All right, Johnny, who said that? I want to take away home runs. I want to win a gold glove. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best left fielder in baseball. Mike, we're going to the psych ward because it's <laughs> Taylor Ward. He yep. wants to be the best left fielder in baseball. In fact, let me pull up this uh, the stat here. I really want to uh, share it with you. So uh, this was floating around on Twitter. Listen to this. 
Uh, actually, this came from the Sam Blum article, I believe. So okay. uh, about Taylor Ward. Uh, Ward batted 370, 481, and 713 with nine home runs, 23 RBIs in 30 games before he suffered the injury. Wow. During the injury, Jeez. he hit 219, 293, 336 with eight homers and 24 RBIs over his next 74 games heading into September. But Ward, after regaining the strength in his shoulder, finished the year strong, batting 345, 397, wow. 575 slugging with six home runs and 18 RBIs over the final 31 games of the season. Mike, keep that boy healthy because he is going to be a transformative piece of this team. Did you see that they hired uh, Chris Woodward too? Yes. To uh, be yeah. a consultant, a batting consultant. And he's helped out uh, Brett Phillips. He's helped out Taylor Ward. And, and I feel like the guy earned a spot on, the, on this Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Especially as for... he helped Taylor Ward, man. And a hundred percent. And what if Brett Phillips ends up becoming a really good bat for us? I know he's going to be the fourth outfielder, but there's potential for him to actually be somebody that comes off the bench, even as a defensive replacement, maybe he gets one at bat, but he's actually somebody who's drawn pitches, maybe drawing walks. Like, I, I really like that move, and I am really excited about Taylor Ward, Johnny. And mm -hmm. if he stays healthy, I think he can repeat the numbers of early last season and late last season. I think that that was who Taylor Ward is. I don't think mm -hmm. he's a fluke, Johnny. I think no. he's actually somebody who could be the best left fielder in baseball when he goes out there and plays. All right, we got to do it. We've got to talk about, <laughs> we're not even going to guess who it was because you know these are uh, Rob yeah. Manfred quotes. Mike, they're why don't ridiculous. You, why don't you read this quote, <laughs> this first quote from Rob Manfred on Artie Marino? All right, he said, I think a lot of sort of, which it's a terrible sentence, by the way. <laughs> I think a lot of the sort of negativity recently, he's talking about Artie Moreno, uh, was a reflection back on the Angels and not a product of Artie doing anything inappropriate or improper. And immediately when I heard that, John, and then you tweeted out from our Super Halo Bro Bros handle, like, that is so tone deaf. Like the definition of tone deaf. Read the room, homie, yeah. because that was so tone deaf. And honestly, John, it's not unexpected because of what we've already seen from Rob Manfred over the yeah. last few years, right? Exactly. And the thing is, Artie Marino, it, to, to say that, okay, let me start over. <laughs> I'm all flustered. <laughs> Rob Manfred, to say that the negativity around the Angels team is a product of us losing, having bad seasons over the last eight years. Like, how dumb yeah. do you think these fans are? Like, yeah. I understand, yes, we're upset that the last, the last eight years have sucked. That's, of course, any sure. team is going to go sure. through that. Yeah. And any fan base is going to be upset about that. But here's the thing. Artie may not have uh, fielded the best teams over the last eight years, but to talk about inappropriate or improper, what about the loss of life? What about... Yeah the drug use she didn't know about. What about not paying minor leaguers and having them share one room in, in when there's 15 guys in a, in a house or whatever. And then the, the backdoor deals with the city, like those are the things we're upset about with yes. Artie Marino. Like yes. the, the, the fact that this roster and not going over the luxury tax and stuff like that has been frustrating. That's, that's one part of it. But to say that the angels not winning is why fans are upset and why there's negativity around the team. Like, like you said, read the room, Madfred, yeah, because yeah. there's <laughs> we're not dumb. Like we see all of this stuff. It's all being reported on. Fans know it. People are sick of it. And yeah. they want a responsible owner. And that's why it was so disappointing when Artie said he was coming back. So that that quote really bugged me from Rob Manfred. Yeah, I think what's really ridiculous about it, John, is that he just doesn't have a sense of what's really happening in Anaheim. And even more importantly, no. John, the media doesn't have a sense of what's happening in Anaheim. As we've talked about, like Buster Olney, when we made the trade with Hunter Renfro and we traded a bunch of guys away that we really weren't relying on. And he mm -hmm. said, I can't believe this pitching star organization <laughs> traded away pitchers, right? And all the Angel fans were like, it's Jansen Junk and two other guys that we don't yeah. remember or even yeah. know about, right? And I think that that really is just an indication of how many eyes are on the product in Anaheim. 
people are watching Shohei and some are watching Mike Trout, but most are not watching anything that happens around them, which is why a winning season and getting to the playoffs would be so important because winning solves everything, John. And I think <laughs> what it would actually do is help put some salve on our hearts and have us not dislike Artie Moreno that much, although it doesn't erase some of the things that have happened under his watch. And right. that's the thing that's been so frustrating for Angel fans is like, Rob, then you're not paying attention. We're paying attention and we're not paid to pay attention. We're right. paying to pay attention and we see everything that's happening. And so you to come out and act like, like do a Jedi mind trick and say, you know, these are not the droids <laughs> you're looking for is so ridiculous. And it's, it's unbecoming of somebody who's supposed to be the commissioner of major league baseball. Do better, Rob, you need to do a whole lot better. Yeah. And we know that Artie and, and Manfred are tight, so he's not yeah. going to say anything disparaging. Uh, the other side of the coin, <laughs> when it comes to Rob Manford quotes, yeah. is this one, which actually made me kind of hopeful. Yeah, uh, This is on the Bally Sports situation. He said, we are prepared no matter what happens to make sure the games are available to fans in their local markets. He also said, if Bally doesn't pay up, MLB clubs will terminate the contracts. MLB would produce the games, use MLB network technology, and would try to arrange for cable and satellite distri uh, distributors to air them. Later on, he also mentioned that MLB TV would be an option as well. Yeah, yeah. What I love about this, Mike, is the fact that, you know why we have blackout restrictions? Because of the regional sports networks, yep. like Bally Sports and previously Fox Sports. And the reason why they have them is because they want people to subscribe to cable to watch games and that's part of the draw of having these sports ne networks but if the networks go away and there's no reason to have blackout restrictions anymore which is the most ridiculous thing in the entire yes. world yeah. like thank you <laughs> i want to pay i want to pay you money to watch my team but you won't let me so i'm not going to pay for your product like yeah. that's yes yeah. that's, that's what it is and so right. you want money from me i will gladly pay you money to watch the angels. I'm not going to pay for cable, but right. if you give me a streaming service, it's 2023. Let's figure it out. People. Uh, so to get rid of those blackout restrictions and for, for that to go away would be amazing. What are your thoughts on this? Rob Manfred quote, man, I would, I would pay to watch the angels and I would pay a monthly subscription to watch the angels. Right. And if it meant that the other teams are involved in that, that's, that's even better, right? If I get MLB TV, I'm, I'm going to pay for it because Absolutely. I can watch the angels minor leagues and uh, all the other teams that I want. So yeah. why not? Yeah. I just, I, re I really missed the days when it was on regular television, right? Cause then you mm -hmm. could watch it and uh, you would fall in love with the announcers because they were your guys that were there every single day. And mm -hmm. I, I really missed those days. And I hope that this opportunity, even though it's terrible that, you know, bankruptcy is being talked about. I think that this is an opportunity for MLB to do something to, to do a solid for the fans, right? Because we've mm -hmm. been through a lot of really ridiculous conversations about the contracts and we had to go through the COVID season and all of that. And so I think this is an opportunity for MLB to get really, really creative. And you mentioned it, John, why not just have a streaming service? Because people mm -hmm. are going to pay for that. People will pay for that. And it's it, like, think about like NFL Sunday ticket. Why wouldn't there be something like that with MLB and right. the team that you watch? That resource would probably be more and would, would accrue more resource than what maybe Bally's would actually have paid mm -hmm. for this organization's rights to be able to, to broadcast them. And so I think this is an opportunity for them to get really creative. And I'm not so hopeful because Rob Manfred is in charge of it, but I'm also, <laughs> I'm also hopeful that maybe they come up with something really great so that we can watch these games and not have to worry about if they're going to be blacked out or not. It'll be a better solution, but there will be some big monkey wrench to it that we're like, well, what the heck is this? What is this plot twist? Yes, so yes. it'll be like, yeah, we can watch the angels, but like right. there's going to be, there's going to be buy big... 27 tickets to these yeah. games. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen every day. Now make your second listen. Uh, Locked On MLB Prospect Show with our friend Lindsey Crosby. He's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow, and his podcast is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Like I said at the beginning of the show, be sure you give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and, of course, at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Keep up with everything regarding the show, our halos, our instant reactions, all that good stuff. Mike, next time we meet on Locked On Angels, what are we going to do? 
We have Sarah Valenzuela from the LA yes. Times. She will join <laughs> us. Uh, she was supposed to be with us today, had to reschedule. And because we're just so gracious, we decided that we would, right? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to having her on the show yes. because she's a great follow on Twitter and she's done a great job of updating us as to what's happening during spring training. So we have a lot of questions about Shohei and a lot of questions about Mike Trout and a lot of questions about the team. And so join us tomorrow as we talk with Sarah Valenzuela on Locked on, a on, Locked on Angels. <laughs> Until then, we hope that you'll join us. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.